Hi, I'm your host, Megalon Jones, and welcome back to the sharp end of the stick for more combat mission Fortress Italy. It's the end of the war, the middle of April 1945, with the South African 6th Armored Division attempting to take some positions and open up the road to Boulogne. The most obvious feature of the map we've got that we're going to be playing on is the fact that about a third of the map can't be accessed it's the Reno River on the right there's been a bridge blown and we're more or less forced to take this road along the river in order to begin to approach our objectives speaking of which we have two we have to take the first is a stone compound we're gonna that is called the via that features a lot of firing ports for german infantry it also has a limited number of doorways i do not have any engineers to blow holes in this thing so i basically have to attack along the side here try not to get drawn into a fight into that courtyard move the infantry around to the rear find a door and fight my way through it once we get through the via there is a tree line which we have been told contains a german infantry and a possible gun position the tree line is very dense but there's something interesting is that the view is blocked for my route of approach from this area. So I plan on rolling them up and defeating the German force in detail. I'm gonna send a second platoon up to the woods just to hold, remain hidden in case first and third platoon on column march on the right come into any problems. I'm also gonna drop artillery on the suspected gun position. Once first and third platoon along the right make contact or develop contact we're going to come up with a plan of action more than likely we're going to end up having to clear the wooded area along the riverbank use that as a base of support to move into the via and then move into the tree line It's 0800 hours, and I have one hour and 30 minutes to take those two positions. When I think of the Commonwealth, or at least my experience with the Commonwealth forces, they're kind of mixed. They are very rifle heavy. They almost have zero in the way of automatic weapons, and they rely on support provided at the battalion level. And as such, I've been given three Sherman tanks with 76 millimeter guns this is the sixth armored division the initial barrage is set to medium and a short firing time it appears to land on target i have no idea if anything's actually there or if there is something there if it's disrupted it the movement to contact along the right flank goes without a hitch and we put forward scouts. Twenty minutes into the scenario, we finally make contact just where I figured we would. The Germans are dug in along the riverbank in the woods. Well, 1st Platoon now has the unenviable task of fighting an unknown amount of Germans in very difficult terrain. In order to assist them, I'm bringing up the three tanks along the right as backup. But first, we're going to drop smoke in order to obscure their movement. I do not want to lose any Sherman tanks to long-range anti-tank fire. 
third platoon is going to be held in reserve. First platoon sections are at first able to make good way into the forest by achieving firepower superiority. Um, they're running into German fire teams. At most, in the end, it turns out there's probably a platoon of Germans here, but the terrain and the lack of automatic weapons forces first platoon to end up being bogged down about halfway up into the woods. Here we see the smoke barrage beginning to build and the movement of the platoon of Sherman Mark II's up in order to try to support 1st platoon. I'm very reluctant to engage the Germans up close with armor in these woods as that tends to end up with brewed up destroyed Sherman tanks. We now find ourselves in the close quarters hand grenade portion of the program. I tend to think that the Germans have more explosive charge in their grenades than the Allies do. Uh, the potato mashers, I don't know, if somebody wants to uh, correct me in the comments, please do. But um, that first German hand grenade killed two troopers and wounded three and we just chucked three grenades at Germans right here and as far as I can tell it doesn't do anything except put them under some suppression that one exploded that like a foot from that dude's face eventually the Germans start to rout and I decide to commit the Sherman tanks just to make sure uh, the opposition gets the full measure it's always good to kill infantry in the open. All right, situation reports. First platoon and the Shermans are going to continue to develop the Infiltration of the riverbank, 3rd platoon is going to get online and try to figure out the best way into the via. At the same time, I'm pulling 2nd platoon out of the center, back to the rear, to be as more or less reserves. I have a bit of... Uh, overblown confidence of the situation with the Germans in the uh, riverbank. Um, they're not quite finished with the fight yet. Uh, those, those fire teams that I saw trying to panic and run isn't entirely indicative of what's actually going on. There are still Germans willing to fight. To make matters even more interesting, German positions in the Via start open up. These are fixed machine guns, and they immediately bring a halt to any type of uh, South African movement in the forest. My response to this is to start putting down smoke from the two-inch mortars and to start moving the armor up to engage the machine guns in the Via.
The Shermans are supported with surviving sections of 1st Platoon and sections from 3rd Platoon, and everything seems to be going well, so I get a bit more liberal with my use of the Shermans, but all it takes is one uh, man with an anti-tank rocket to ruin your day. Panzer Shrek team get spotted by my infantry and they get taken care of, but uh, they've knocked out one Sherman. Um, the Sherman itself has one crew member dead. Um, when I say it's knocked out, I mean, that was a little bit of a overstatement. The gun still works, the engine still works, but the crew is panicked. And so they bail out, and while I don't begrudge them that I do begrudge the fact that instead of going towards friendly lines they bail out and run straight into the fire sack of uh, awaiting German machine guns in the via While all this drama is going on, there are random German spotting rounds landing around the battlefield, so I decided it's time to move 3rd Platoon into action, because I do not want them caught in an artillery barrage in the tree line. Okay, now's the main portion of the show. Uh, third platoon, supported by the Shermans, who are going to be blasting any type of German opposition along the via that they come across, are going to use the via as covering, along with smoke, to attack the via from the rear. There are pretty good, there's a door that I can get into, and I do not want to attack into the courtyard straight up to the guts of the via. This here is something that you look at and you kind of cringe. I mean, it all worked out well, and the or, excuse me, the South Africans were able to get uh, firepower superiority. But there's way too many, ch too much infantry in that building. Um, you got to spread out some, but it happens to be kind of the only hard cover along this route of advance. But we are able to move up the Shermans and to start suppressing and silencing MG42 positions. Once we build up an assault force, the two-inch mortars start putting down smoke so they can run in front of the courtyard without entering it. We're also moving tanks along that point. So we've got essentially one section gets through, no problem. Although we end up problems with the second section here. Um, the quality of the troops are mixed. Um, I have some veterans, some regulars, and some greens. These guys uh, don't take any casualties, but they get spooked being shot at, and they decide to run straight 
in the opposite direction of probably where they should go. You want to stay in the smoke, not run away from the smoke. So Nimrod section spends the rest of the scenario being sniped at by Germans in the Via until we're able to stop that shenanigans. But these guys, if they couldn't handle running across, then they're not going to be able to handle what's coming here. Um, this section, these guys are straight up gung ho and they come in the rear of the via and it's, uh, pretty much surprised to the Germans. I love this. Backed by the two surviving Shermans, one section of 3rd Platoon is able to infiltrate the Via. As we're getting into the via, we also come into contact with a German, the German mortar section, and they begin to use direct fire. Uh, that guy that dies right there is the squad leader, so our God and Country section no is leaderless. But because of their uh, their grit, we're able to start building up more infantry into the point where we can get them into the via to start overwhelming the Germans. The remaining fight in the via objective is really a grind. Uh, it's house to house, uh, window to window. At one point, there are British soldiers on a bottom floor shooting up through the ceiling while the Germans on the top floor are shooting down through their floor. Um, it's just very manpower intensive and it ends up eating up 3rd Platoon. I wouldn't call 3rd Platoon out of action but I do have one platoon in reserve to take on the tree line. All the while this has been going on, second platoon has been moving up along the right, along the riverbank and getting ready for its starring role. Okay. It's fire and maneuver time. The survivors in 1st and 3rd platoons are going to hold down the Germans in the forest tree line. 2nd platoon is going to maneuver up to a building, detach one section, kill the German mortar crew, send two sections on a left flank maneuver into the tree line to attack the Germans from the rear. And that's exactly what happens. Uh, I have no complaints about what goes on. I've got fresh troops. The Germans are starting to get rattled. 
uh, one section of South Africans shows up in the building, uh, slaughters the remaining mortar troops. They start running while two other sections begin an assault into the tree line. We're now getting winning cues. Germans are fleeing the tree line. That's the better part of a squad trying to run away. So when the two sections assault into the tree line, what they do is they end up finding pretty much it's been abandoned with the exception of a few more hardy Germans who either want to die or surrender. With a couple minutes left and the Germans in full flight, I pull the plug on the scenario and find out that I've got a South African major victory. Everything's acceptable. We inflicted about twice as many casualties on the defenders. Um, yeah, I really like this scenario. It's, um, it helps in the planning if you understand that you, you've got three maneuver elements there were three things that I had to do and then I assigned the platoons you know a job beforehand um, attacking up the middle which we didn't talk about because that's insane um, that's what the Germans wanted you to do if you'll see here um, the Germans have some mines they have those red things there if we get a little bit closer yeah those are target reference points for their mortars they've got them there they've got mines I, I didn't run into any of this stuff there's a target reference point at what appears to be a good place to you know launch an attack from that that tree line that i initially put second platoon in it, it, it's too good to be true you can't fall for something like that uh, so planning 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 fire and maneuver and combined arms is basically the situation here i hope you enjoyed this little film and i look forward to seeing you the next time around fiction becomes science fact. If you find any problems out there, go to the place. Just keep it to yourself. He's over at Colby's. He's found another 20 or 30 hills just like the one we burned. I mean, this right here is scientific phenomenon. As you know, all species of megalomorphs are cannibalistic. If you put them together, they'll kill each other off. They just don't colonize like ants or bees do. An army of deadly predators searching, destroying anything in their path. Why did they come? What do they want? In the tradition of the great science fiction thrillers, Dimension Pictures presents Kingdom of the Spiders. Starring William Shatner, Tiffany Bowling, Woody Strode, and introducing Althavis Davis. The spiders in this area have organized themselves into an aggressive army. I've never seen anything like it. One minute they weren't there, and the next minute they were everywhere. Jump at a girl! Listen, there's thousands of them out there. We'll never make it. Why haven't we heard from the sheriff? He must know we're trapped in here. I'm telling you, I don't think we should chance it. Yo.
your nightmares will never be the same. Kingdom of the Spiders, the next victim could be you.